Okay, moving on to our task number two with the extranet MPLS VPN. Here we have to configure all the required routers to allow full connectivity across the VRF from site one and two to the extranet network at site three. And here we are allowed to use only two new route target, one, two, three, colon, one, one, two, three, colon, two. And then we have to verify connectivity using R6, R8, and switch one, loopback 10 through 12. And then we need to make sure the site four did not have access to the extranet site three. Okay, so going back to the diagram here, what we have so far is the traffic within the VRF C1 and VRF C2s are completely isolated. As you can see that when you look at the routing table, whether it's on R1 or R2, they do not see the routes coming from R4, although this route this belongs to switch one. So what we're going to do now is to allow those routes to be imported into the VRF C1, the route that belongs to VRF C2. And the way to do that is actually pretty straightforward now that we actually have gone through the whole hop and spoke. And so far we have dealt only with the route target import export within the VRF, but the concept hasn't really changed when you do the import or export across the VRF. And actually it doesn't really matter if it's across the VRF, the same VRF, the route target. It's just basically a tag on the routes. And as long as you configure those route targets to be imported to the VRF, regardless of which VRF is actually originated from, it will be imported to the VRF that you want. So what we're gonna do is, using the new route targets that we're allowed to use, one, two, three, one, and one, two, three, two, we're gonna configure our VRF C2 to export. So RT export, let's do one, two, three, one. And for the import, instead of importing, you may think that the we can just import the RT 100 colon 100. If you do that, the R4 is going to also import the route that belongs to Site4, which is not what we want because you said Site4 should not have access to the extranet. So we do not want R4 to import the routes that belongs to R7. That's why we are coming up with a new route target for the import. And we can just use 1, 2, 3, colon 2. Okay, and for Site1 and Site2 is just going to be a reverse of that because we want whatever is being exported by this site to be imported by our extranet and vice versa. But we still do not want site one and two to learn the routes directly. That's why we are coming up with two separate route target. Okay, so on top of what we already have, we're gonna do RT import of one, two, three, one, and then RT export of one, two, three, two. And that's going to be true for both site one and site two. Okay, so start our configuration on router one under IP VRF C1 that belongs to site one. You do route target export one, two, three, one, and then import of one, two, three, two. Make sure I got that right. Import one, two, three, one. Actually, I had that wrong way around, so let me redo this real quick. So it should have been export one, two, three, two, and then import one, two, three, one. Then same for VRF C1 site two. Export import. Okay, now just to make sure that we have the correct configuration, right? So in addition to the 100 colon, now we have the 1, 2, 3, colon, 1 or 2 for both of our VRF. Now for our router R4, we're going to do export of 1, 2, 3, 1 and import of 1, 2, 3, 2. So IP VRF this time we are dealing with. Actually, before we do that, let's do show IP, BGP, VPN, V4, all. You can see that all the R4s currently have for the VRF C2 is just the local route, switch to loopback addresses. So now we're going to import or exchange all the routes between VRF C1 and C1 site 2 and C2. So we'll do IP VRF C2 route target import. One, two, three, two, and then export one, two, three, one. Give it a second for a detect effect, and then we'll do the 
show ppgp v3 v4 all command one more time you can see that in addition to the 1010 network right here 1010 network we now have the routes that belongs to r6 and r8 has been imported into the vrfc2 as well so you can see that the route distinguisher belongs to r6 that's 100 100 and the route distinguisher belongs to the site 2 which is uh, contains R8 has got the RD of 300 300. Okay, so now if you show IP VGP VPN all, let's take a look under 6600 routes. The one that's coming from R1 has the RTF 100 colon 100, which is what we have originally, as well as the new route target that we just added for the export on R1, which is 123 colon 2. Okay, and that's how the route gets imported. Okay, so you do show run begin IP uh, VRF. You can see that we configure C2 to import 123 colon 2. And that's why we have that route imported to VRF C2. Okay, and this is regardless of the origin of the routes, whether it's the same VRF or a different VRF. As you can see that the route distinguisher and route target, the way that they are used are totally independent. There's no really, there's not really a correlation between the two attributes whatsoever. Okay, so now let's test out the routes. Let me jump to the switch one. And then if you show a PBGP on switch one, you can see that switch one is now learning R6 and R8 routes, right? So you can try to ping 6601 sourcing from loopback 10. You can see that is pingable as well as the ping to router 8 that also succeeded. Now going back to R1, show IP VGP VPN before all. R1 obviously has learned switch one routes as well right here for the 1010XX. And if you look at the 101000 routes, you see that the one that it's learning from router R4 has a route target of 123 colon 1 attached to the route as well. Let's do final verification on R6. Show IP BGP. You can see that it's R6 is obviously learning switch 1 routes and we're trying to ping R6 from switch 1 so we should be able to ping switch 1 from R6 as well. But this time let's say source from loopback 12 and you can see that it's working also. Finally, let's verify that the site 4 has no access to the extranet. So on R2 to show IP, BGP, BP, and V4 all, we can see that R2 has no knowledge of switch 1 loopback addresses. Okay, and this is because R2, uh, VRF this on R2, doesn't matter which one, it does not have the import of the route target 123 colon 1, okay, which is where, or which is what the route is being tagged with. Okay, and that's how you prevent a site from learning routes. Obviously, if you hop onto R7 and try to ping 101001, that's obviously fail. Okay, so that should complete our task number two. Hopefully after this lab, you can see how you can use route target to come up with a more sophisticated MPLS VPN topology as well as leaking routes between the VRFs just to provide those VRFs connectivity between them. But just make sure that the IP that you exchange between the VRF, they are not overlapping. Otherwise, you might run into some issues with the IP conflict. Okay, so that wraps up our video on MPLS VPN advanced topology. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.